yeah they are they are hungry these fish are hungry but well, we kind of got a cool one today it is uh may 10th i believe and normally this time of year it's usually a little bit warmer i think it's i think it's about 52 degrees outside right now usually it's in the 60s this time of year up in wisconsin minnesota area and typically these crop here slid up into about five, six feet of water or shallower this time of year because this is their spawning season up north so pretty much the entire month of May. They're gonna get there as soon as this, <laughs> this kind of this cold front gets out of the way. Uh, probably this weekend, I think it's supposed to warm back up into the 70s and we're gonna see water temps rise into the low 60s. These crop here are gonna feel very safe to slide up into shallow water, get on their beds and do their thing. But for right now, they're kind of slid off the edge. And I'm in about eight to nine feet of water. Today, I wanted to talk about two setups that I primarily use, and you're gonna see a lot throughout most of the Northern Midwest. Um, and that is bobber fishing this time of year. There's two different setups. There is the slip bobber. Or this is the hybrid slip bobber. If you notice, it's sliding up and down the line, but it's not normally. A slip bobber would slide like this up and down the line. This bobber is a three-in-one bobber by Rod and Bob. It's got two notches here. That bottom notch is actually for a fixed bobber, but the top one here is for a slip bobber setup. So you just hook it into that top notch, or that, I guess it'd be the bottom one, the one closest to the bottom of the stem. Hook it into the line like that, and it just slides real easy up and down the line. It's also got a hollowed out grommet in the middle there that uh, you can run a line through and run it like a regular slip bobber if you wanted to. Um, today, we're going to be running this rig, but once these crappie get shallower here next week, I'm thinking water temps are going to be there. Um, I'm going to be running a fixed bobber setup, and typically what I like to do when it's shallow water, that rig's actually set up for a live minnow. This, today, we're using live minnows on this rig, but once these crappie get slid up onto their spawning flats and get set up onto their beds, you can use a live minnow if you, if you really need to, but I don't like to because odds are pretty good you're going to catch a bunch of them. Um, and in that case, I usually go with either plastic or in this case, this is a hand-tied hand -tied hair jig, hand-tied by yours truly. I'm uh, getting into hand-tying some jigs just for fun, just for myself, but that's a, it's actually a 1 16th ounce ACC crappie sticks jig. Yes, not only do they make rods, they, they make jigs now as well. I got the bobber set, it's probably two and a half feet above my jig here. I'm, gonna, I'm probably not gonna be using this one today unless I find some real shallow. But this case, we're using a smaller bobber on this setup. This is a half inch, uh, three in one bobber by Rod and Bob's. So smaller setup for skinny water. Um, I usually go with the half inch with a 16th ounce jig right here. Uh, doesn't scare the crappie for the most part. You know, when you're casting a bobber up shallow, you might spook a few fish, but if you go with a small enough float, shouldn't be a problem. This is something, again, once these crappies slide up, I'll be using this a lot probably next week, um, unless I find some on this lake today that are real shallow. But today we're using the classic slip bobber setup with a live minnow rig. And I wanted to answer a couple questions because I think my last video, uh, people had questions about this right here. Now notice that the split shot is directly above my Aberdeen hook. This is a number one size Aberdeen hook by Zone Lock. Um, if you notice right by the barb, there's a little bit of a bend it really helps keep the minnow on and it keeps that fish's mouth away from the barb so it doesn't uh, put a hole in the fish's mouth and helps them stay on a little bit better. But the reason the weight is directly above the hook, I think the last time I was using this, there was a fairly negative bite, meaning the crappie didn't really want to hit it or when they did hit this bait, well, there was a live minnow, I think I used crappie nibbles as well. They would grab it and they'd keep rising up in the water column with it. And when that happens, you wanna be able to see your bobber do something like this. So normally it'd be sitting like this in the water once all your line came through and your weight in a minnow is holding it upright like this. When that crappie grabs it and raises up in the water, you wanna be able to see your bobber do something like that. Cause that's a negative bite, that signals a negative bite. And what happens is if you have your split shot here, let's say it's, pull it up the line here. Let's say it's like this, about six inches above my hook. That crappie can grab that hook and rise up the water column with it, but this weight is still holding my bobber straight up and down. So I don't know that there's a bite. So that's why I had the weight right above the hook. 
Now today, I honestly don't know what the bite's gonna be. I'm actually gonna start it off probably about four or five inches above my hook here. I'm gonna put that, this is a 1 8 ounce split shot. I'm gonna put it about four or five inches above my Aberdeen hook here. We're gonna start it off there. We'll see how the bite is. If it seems like I'm missing a lot of fish, I'll put it down towards uh, the top of the eyelet of the hook. If it feels like it's a good bite, I might even raise it up and let that minnow run around and keep triggering that aggressive bite for these crappie. So we're gonna play that by ear, but we're gonna, we set up on a, uh, kind of right on this ledge where the weeds stop. There's about weeds in eight, eight feet of water. They're not very big. They're, I don't know, maybe a foot tall at this point. Um, our growing season obviously starts a lot later than those of you in the south, but uh, there is a brush pile. They're not quite related to it. They're kind of pushed off between the brush pile and the deeper weeds. So I'm just gonna do some casting and we're gonna let this bobber drift in these waves and hopefully catch a few crappie with it. Let's hook one of these minnows up and uh, see if we can get one of these crappie to bite. There we go. Now I'm gonna hook them through the dorsal fin here, just behind the dorsal fin. Crappie like to eat head first, and this kind of looks more of a natural presentation there, so I'm gonna hook it that way, and uh, we'll see. We might have to adjust it though. Always making adjustments when you're out fishing. Always gotta do that. Was that a fish? Yeah, it is. there's a fish. There we go. Fish number one. That's about a seven inch fish. Just to confirm it, I'm gonna guess seven. Might be a little more. Oh, look at that, he's eight and a half. Eight and a half. Not big enough to eat. I'm gonna keep a few. Looks like a uh, nine inch fish is kind of what I wanna keep. They're big enough for fillets. We're not catching any giants today. I do apologize for that, but there's a bunch of them down there. Big schools. So what you typically see with these, you know, we'll call them eater size fish, these nine inch fish, eight, eight, nine, ten inch fish, school up really tight. It's not like those, you know, down south you find those bigger fish, pound and a half, two pounders. They're pretty much by themselves. But this, this time of year can be a lot of fun, bobber fishing in shallow water. There he is. Especially when they're feeding. There's a better one. That guy's probably nine. Oh yeah, there's a nine and a halfer. Go nine and one. Well, pinch tail, he's nine and a half. Flat tail, he's about nine and a quarter coming home with me. If you notice, he's a male because he's got the black belly. He's got a black tint on his belly there. He's coming home with me. I'm gonna keep hooking him right behind the dorsal fin. That, you know, it seems to be working. They, they do want to feed head first on these minnows. So give them that big opportunity instead of having a hook right through the minnow's head, trying to give them that big opportunity of having half the minnow stick out so they can grab it. Jeepers, yeah, they are, they are hungry. These fish are hungry. There's, there's no doubt on these bobbers going down or these slips going down. It's another, I think it might be another eater. Oh, he's pooping all over the boat though. There's another nine inch fish right on the dot. There you go. Ooh, he's pooping all over the deck. Better get in the live well real quick. To give you some idea, these water temps right now are about 53 degrees. So typically our crappie up north and in most states, crappie will tend to slide shallow once that water temp holds into that mid to upper 50 degree range. And they're gonna slide into their spawning flats. I'm gonna guess by next week, this water's gonna be ready for them and they're gonna be pushing in less than six feet of water. We're not gonna adjust that sinker because it seems to be working. Here's another one, I think. 
I'm watching the waves too, because a lot of times crappie will grab it and they'll just hold it and that bobber will stay down between the waves, just like that. Just like that. Well, that's a funny hook set. I don't know how that happened. That's a female, she's gonna go back. She's got a bigger belly there. Not a big fish, but for a little fish, she's got a fat belly. That's a female. White belly and a big belly this time of year. She's going back. But if you notice, that bobber, I don't know if you guys could see it from here, but that bobber just stayed down in between the waves. When that does that, that means a fish has got it. Or if you're fishing in weeds or some sort of timber, it probably means you got a snag. Let's see if we can get another one here real quick. These waves are definitely helping. Give that extra movement right there. There's one. Give that a little extra movement to that minnow. This guy's not gonna cut it. He's only about a seven inch fish. Oh, well, that's a girl. Fat belly on that one. There he is. Oh my goodness. I was not paying attention. There we go, that's a better one. That might be a keeper. Let's see if this guy's nine. Look, looks like nine again. Looks like our he's in another male there. Black belly again. Let's put this guy on here, and I'm pretty sure this is a nine-inch fish. Oh yeah, he's nine and a quarter. There's nine. He's about nine and a quarter. Another one for the live well. I'm only gonna keep about a half dozen today. Should be enough for a nice little fish fry. Tied on that 16th ounce hand tied hair jig, and then I switched it up to the half ounce bobber. We'll see if we uh, we can get some strikes. There are literally fish all over in front of the boat. I might have to move it a bit, I'm not sure. But we'll see if we can get some strikes. The strikes are gonna be a lot quicker on this hair jig than the minnow. They're not gonna hold on to it, so you really gotta watch watch your float when it comes to oh goodness what is going on there when it comes to strikes it's gonna be more of a pop just like that shoot and i missed him you gotta be <laughs> i don't know if you guys saw that but it's it's a quick pop and uh you gotta be ready for it oh and also that was a that was a negative bite that bobber goes sideways i don't know if you guys caught that but that bobber goes sideways that's a negative bite yeah, these crappie are so aggressive right now. Live minnows are not necessary. Is that? I think that's a male. It's just not. It's kind of a slightly darker body. Let's see what that is. That might be my sixth fish for the live well. Sure is. Another nine, nine and a quarter, nine and a half. It's gonna fry up. There he is. On that wave. He just held it down on that wave. The waves are getting a little more choppy, so uh, it's getting a little tougher to see this bobber in that camera frame, but there's another female for you. I'll let her go. But that's pretty much it. Either the hair jig setup or live minnow setup. When they're super aggressive, you can get away with these hair jigs. And uh, once these fish start pushing up shallow on their beds, hair jigs in the fixed bobber position. So instead of this slip bobber setup going up and down like that, I'm just gonna put it in this that bottom little notch right there, that fixed bobber position. It's gonna lock it in. It won't be able to slide up and down the line. That's for spawning though, when they're on their beds. But uh, Let's break down exactly what we're using again and it's gonna wrap her up. Um, just a little evening trip after work and uh, I got my crappie so we're gonna go fry them up but these are two bobbers I was using. This is the original three-in-one bobber. This is a half ounce or a half inch by Rod and Bobs. This is gonna be the typical setup I use for spawning crappie once these crappie go up on their beds. I'm gonna be using that hair jig Something like this, or even just a jig in plastic. With that little fixed bobber position, it's a great setup. Now, today, 
I was using that eighth ounce split shot, so I was going a little bit bigger. This is a three quarter inch uh, Revo X by Rod and Bob's. And uh, again, these are three in one. I know people ask, they see the spring and they think, well, that's not a slip bobber. Yeah, check this out. See those notches? That top notch there, that's that notch. Slip bobber position, that bottom notch closest to the spring by my fingers. That's a fixed bobber position, so three in ones. I love them because you can quick change them out if you got the wrong bobber size with the wrong weight that you tied on. This is that, that one eighth ounce split shot that I had tied on. If I, for whatever reason, if I put the wrong bobber on uh, by mistake, I can easily change it out just by pinching down the spring and taking it off the line. Um, I don't have to cut the line and retie, so that's why I love these. Um, I'll link them below. And of course, my go-to slip bobber rig is the eight foot ACC setup. Um, if you notice today, I wasn't really casting that far, so I could get away with a 1,000 size reel. If you're doing a lot of casting, I highly recommend going up to a 2,000 size reel, something like this. This is a 2,000 size, um, if you guys can see the difference there. Yeah, 2,000 size. I was throwing a little bit for smallmouth earlier today. Uh, 2,000 size reel is what I go with if you're casting a lot. As far as line goes, I use monofilament. This is six pound mono. Um, you can either use clear or high vis, doesn't really matter. If you're fishing in the shallows and you got super clear water, you might need to go to four pound. I don't think there's a need to go to two pound or three pound monofilament. Um, so that's my setup. I'm gonna link everything in the video description. Appreciate you watching as always. Again, late pre-spawn. We're actually a little bit behind this year. Uh, these crappie, typically by now, we're gonna have water temps in the upper 50s, low 60s, and these crappie should have been pushed up at least in like five to eight foot of water. A lot of the crappie that I even was side imaging, there's still crappie still out in 15 to 20 feet. Um, so we're, we're a little bit behind this year, um, but eventually these crappie are gonna slide up onto these spawning flats, do their thing, and this slip bobber setup, either the fixed bobber or the slip bobber rig, they're great setups. So if you got any comments or questions, you can post them in the comment section below. If you got questions about anything tackle related, fish finder related, whatever, feel free to message me on their Facebook or Instagram. Somebody actually just messaged me about buying a Garmin unit on Facebook. Um, I will always help you out as much as I can. If you feel free to send me a message on Facebook or Instagram, if you're buying new electronics, um, I'm here to help. So appreciate you watching as always. And uh, I'm gonna get off the water and fry these fish up. We'll see ya.